Paper will be made in order of the day for the next sitting, and I call the clerk. Next order of the day, motion relating to Christian Assyrians in Iraq, a resumption of debate. The question is that this motion be agreed to, and I call the honourable member for Barara. Well, Mr Deputy Speaker, can I uh, say this is not the first occasion that I have spoken in this chamber on the plight of uh, Christians in the Middle East. And uh, I said on the last occasion, which was in uh, May of 2011, two years ago, uh, that for my own purposes, I have uh, often travelled widely in the Middle East. And one of the discussions I had was with the Middle Eastern Council of Churches, um, because uh, already there were numerous Christians who had fled, many from Iraq, um, and had settled in Syria, had settled in Jordan, and uh, were seeking sanctuary. Um, and many, of course, were seeking to move further afield. And in my discussions with the Middle East Council of Churches, they made the point very strongly that Christians had been resident um, in the Middle East for some 2,000 years. Um, and they didn't want to preside over, essentially, Christians being driven out of the Middle East generally. And so this motion is designed to focus on those issues. It's not the only motion that will be before the parliament. Uh, the government seems to have found reason to talk about these issues again, but I think it's very important to understand that Christian Assyrians, a minority religious and racial group in Iraq, have been subjected to ongoing violence, intimidation and harassment and discrimination. And I'll deal with some of that um, in a moment. Um, they've been discriminated against in many ways, including the illegal occupation of their land um, and the transfer of it. Um, there are reports that some 600,000 Christian Assyrians have now fled Iraq, um, and many of those have settled here in Australia. Um, but the Syrians remaining are denied basic human rights and subjected to harassment uh, intimidation and discrimination. And uh, this motion is to condemn that violence, intimidation, harassment and discrimination. And it calls upon the government to raise these issues um, with the Iraqi government. Now, I don't know um, that uh, these matters are pursued by government. But I do know that governments have a responsibility to protect their people. And when I hear suggestions um, that uh, we should simply refer to reports um, that raise these matters, I think it ignores um, the responsibility that government itself has to protect its own citizens and to ensure that they are not discriminated against. And uh, I think uh, the plight of the Assyrians, uh, particularly in Iraq, but it's not only in Iraq, um, it's now occurring in Syria itself with the violence that is occurring there. Um, and uh, it's also happening in other areas um, where there are Kurdish populations that the Assyrians face um, very considerable discrimination. Um, and it's not just the uh, illegal occupation of their land, uh, the transferring it to squatters, um, which is the subject of quite comprehensive reporting um, and uh, I don't think can be put aside lightly, but uh, it also includes many attacks on Christians that have occurred and continue to occur um, in Iraq now. Um, Iraq does have its difficulties, but I think there is a responsibility to ensure that uh, the people are able to get um, full information uh, about what their government is doing and how they're seeking to deal with these issues. Um, the point I was making um, 
was that uh, the Assyrians are unique. Um, they have been predominantly Christian uh, in the regions in which they live. Um, they do face uh, discrimination, which first started under the regime of Saddam Hussein. Um, and uh, the uh, details that I mentioned that I would give include, uh, in January uh, of 2008, Epiphany Day, five Assyrian churches, one Armenian church, and monasteries in Mosul and Baghdad were attacked with car bombs in a coordinated fashion. On the 31st of October 2010, at the uh, Sidiat al Najat Cathedral in um, Baghdad, 58 people uh, were left dead. Um, there were eight attacks on churches in 2011, with more than 35 civilians and security forces wounded. And these attacks were used as a tool to suppress um, the Christian religion, in my view. Uh, kidnapping for ransom has been a significant problem, uh, with six abductions reported in 2011, largely around Kirkuk. Uh, some were freed when ransoms were paid, but other stories were not so positive. Arthur Issa Jacob uh, was kidnapped by Al-Qaeda operatives. Uh, $61,500 uh, was paid in ransom, um, but his body was found later mutilated in Kirkuk, um, including near decapitation, his eyes were gouged out, and there were dog bites on his body. Uh, these are the sorts of experiences that many um, have seen, and the threats um, and harassment which are part of daily life, um, are very significant. Um, and uh, it is my view that the Australian government needs to be actively pursuing these matters um, with the Iraqi government. Um, we don't blame them for what is happening, but we do expect that they would be using all of their efforts uh, to ensure the protection of their people. Um, that is the responsibility of all governments. Um, and it's not a matter of treating these matters lightly when so many people have fled. Um, the massive movement of the Assyrian population um, has meant that it is now about half um, what it was. Um, and many of those people who continue to live there have been internally displaced. Um, and when they are internally displaced, they face um, very significant problems. There are hostilities, they find it difficult to find work and employment, they find it difficult to get services, they find it difficult to be able to practice their religion. Um, these are matters that are well known when they do occur, um, but uh, in uh, Iraq in particular, they are significant um, and continue to be significant. And so um, the purpose of the resolution that I have moved is to uh, bring these matters to notice, to ensure that Australians are aware of the, uh, of the plight of Assyrians and to know um, what is being experienced by the uh, families of many of their neighbours um, who live here in Australia. I do make the point, again, that uh, we need to be generous, um, as we have been over decades um, in assisting those people who are refugees and who are forced to flee. Um, and we ought to be providing for uh, placements um, in our own programs to assist. Uh, the special humanitarian program has always been one that has been available for that purpose. And when I was previously minister, uh, I was pleased that we were able to accommodate many Assyrian Christians um, in those programs. I regret that today, um, the possibility of being able to assist is so much more limited uh, because of the uh, failure to be able to adequately manage our borders um, and uh, that has meant that the uh, uh, program places are assigned to others um, who come and pay people smugglers and those who have real needs um, end up being, uh, uh, I think, very significantly disadvantaged. Um, I make the point, as I did earlier, uh, there are some uh, who would suggest um, that Australian government has done all that it should uh, 
um, and that we support, should support their efforts. Um, let me make it very clear. Um, I think there is a lot more advocacy to be done. Governments do have a responsibility to protect their own people, and I think the Assyrian Christians are entitled to that protection, whether they're in Iraq, whether they're in Syria, or whether they're in Turkey. Here, here. Um, the question is that the motion be agreed to. I call the member for Melbourne Ports. The Parliamentary, the Parliamentary Secretary, Secretary for the Arts. Thanks very much, uh, Acting Speaker. Uh, I'd like to, to make some uh, uh, comments about uh, the grave situation faced by the Assyrian Christian minority in Iraq and uh, generally share the uh, excellent uh, motion and sentiments of the member for Barara. Uh, the Assyrians are an ethnic minority who have lived in Iraq since before the Arab conquest. Assyrian Christians officially known as the Holy Apostolic Catholic Assyrian Church of the East, are an ancient Christian denomination. They trace their origins back to the Apostle Thomas, who is believed to have visited Babylon and founded a church there. The Assyrian Christians are not affiliated with any other denomination, although they do have friendly relations with the Vatican, the Greek and Syrian Orthodox churches and the Chaldean uh, Catholics. Uh, at one time, the church had millions of followers in a wide arc from uh, Egypt to China and India. The Assyrians, along with the Armenians, of course, suffered greatly at the hands of the Ottoman regime during World War I, with somewhere between 250,000 and 750,000 people killed. Today, the church has been reduced to a following of about half a million, concentrated in northern Iraq. It has diaspora churches in many countries, including the United States and Australia. During the days of uh, Saddam Hussein's dictatorship in Iraq, the Assyrians uh, like other Christian minorities, enjo enjoyed a certain amount of protection from the secular state, although they suffered from the same political repression and restrictions of freedom of speech as other Iraqis. I generally share the view of the member for Barara that um, it is the duty of the modern state of Iraq to uh, protect its religious minorities, and uh, it's uh, uh, something that those of us in the rest of the world look very ominously at the Middle East uh, over uh, the apparent uh, driving out of Christians from uh, that region of the world, of all denominations. In 1987, there were 1.4 million Christians officially recorded in Iraq. Um, today, there are about 400,000. The fall of Saddam brought many benefits to Iraq, but unfortunately, at least unleashed the forces of religious hatred, particularly between the Shia and Sunni uh, uh, aspects of Islam, and also between the Arab majority and the Kurdish areas in the north. Iraq's Christians have been amongst the many victims of this sectarian conflict, which has been deliberately exploited, of course, by al-Qaeda and other Sunni uh, extremists, as well as by elements within the Shia uh, government of, uh, dominated government of Iraq. Since 2003, Assyrian Christians in Iraq have been the targets of numerous fatal attacks by Islamist groups. Over 65 churches have been bombed and destroyed. Hundreds of Christians have been killed and there has been a wave of kidnappings uh, targeting Christian children and teenagers. As a result, there's been a huge exodus of uh, uh, Christians, uh, including Assyrians from Iraq. The member for Barara said the figure was something close to 600,000. Now, generally, we view the Arab uprisings, uh, the Arab Spring over the last three years as a natural response to repression by dictators and monarchs who've ruled these countries for so long. I've travelled to uh, Tunisia and met uh, the so-called moderate Islamist party led by Rashid Ghanoushi. I hope uh, those in Tunisia stay true to their word of uh, uh, cleaving to democracy. But uh, uh, in other places such as Egypt, the Arab Spring has brought uh, Islamist regimes to power which uh, um, don't seem to protect uh, their Christian minorities. And I've spoken out many times previously about the uh, ill treatment of the Coptic Church uh, in Egypt. I pay tribute to the former uh, Minister for Resources, the member for Batman, uh, Mr Ferguson, who uh, led a delegation with me that met uh, some of the Holy Fathers together with Bishop Suriel in Melbourne after some of the particularly egregious attacks on the Christian community in Egypt. Um, sadly, Assyrian Christians seem to be uh, facing the persecution uh, in the Kurdish enclave in northern Iraq. It's been reported that Assyrians in various villages have been illegally forced out of their homes and off their land. Uh, they have been constantly pressured to convert to Islam in exchange for guarantees of their safety from the Kurdish Muslim majority. Islamic militancy in Iraq, Iraqi Kurdistan is growing and it's uh, minorities who suffer the most. This is particularly sad for uh, 
those of uh, Democrats across the world who have admired uh, Kurdistan as a place uh, slightly independent of uh, Iraq, even uh, before the, the time of uh, Saddam Hussein, um, and a place where uh, uh, there is economic growth and progress. It's a shame that uh, it's Christian minority not being treated better. In Baghdad, Mosul and Nineveh, there have been repeated home invasions, beatings and murders of Christians by Islamist gunmen. Christian families have been forced to flee for their lives and been robbed of their property. There have been numerous attacks on Assyrian Christians in both northern Iraq and Iraqi Kurdistan over the past three years. In the disputed city of Kirkuk, where ethnic and religious tensions are very acute, Christians are forbidden to, were forbidden to celebrate Christmas in 2010. Uh, surely something that um, uh, the government of Iraq could have taken a stronger stand on, on the grounds uh, that uh, Christmas would be an insult to the Muslim majority. In Kirkuk, uh, in 2011, so-called insurgents killed and mutilated a Christian construction worker who they kidnapped and had um, demanded 100,000 ransom for. Human Rights Watch has warned that uh, northern Iraq's minority Christians are the collateral victims of conflict between the Arabs and Kurds over control of the disputed oil-rich provinces in northern Iraq. In one of the worst incidents, uh, uh, acting speaker in October 2010 in Baghdad, Islamist uh, terrorists held about 120 Christians hostage for nearly four hours in a church before security uh, forces stormed the building. That's uh, the incident that the member for Barara was referring to where the shootout left 58 people dead. Hundreds of thousands of Iraqi Christians have fled the country since 2003. Many of them have gone to uh, went to Syria, but now the civil war has broken out there. They're no longer safe there. Uh, they're not welcome in Turkey, though many have gone there anyway. Uh, many of them have found their way to the West and, of course, um, we know many of them are already in Jordan before the current wave of uh, um, Syrian uh, refugees. In the 1940s and 50s, uh, a million Jews were expelled from the Arab countries and from Iran. They were relatively lucky. Uh, they had a place, uh, the Jewish state of Israel, ready and willing to take them. Today, there are still millions of Christians in the Arab world, perhaps as many as 15 million in Egypt. Their position is increasingly insecure as the wave of Islamist militancy spreads across the region. If they are driven out of the countries where they live for the centuries, who will take them in? Mr Speaker, it's incumbent upon all of us in Western societies who believe in religious freedom to speak up and make their voices heard on behalf of the uh, persecuted Christians of uh, uh, the Middle East, whether it's in Egypt, Iraq, whether it's uh, Assyrian Christians in the north of Iraq, uh, anywhere. Um, the situation of an ancient religious minority with their very uh, interesting traditions, their long-held traditions, their century-held traditions, uh, is not something that um, uh, the rest of the world should allow to be abandoned. Um, when uh, many of us saw uh, the uh, famous Bamiyan Buddhas in Afghanistan uh, blown up uh, by uh, the Islamists in Afghanistan, the whole world was offended. When France led um, an expedition in Mali to expel the Islamists from uh, uh, that country to preserve uh, the Muslim shrines and artefacts of Timbuktu, uh, the world cheered the French. And Australia were ver was very strong in, its, uh, in France's support, uh, giving $10 million in aid. I know the uh, ambassador of Mali uh, flew specially from Tokyo, we don't have a resident Malinese ambassador in Australia, to thank Australia for its participation in, uh, uh, in saving his country. He was a Muslim and uh, represented the Muslim moderate majority in that country. It's incumbent on all of us in Western societies to speak up for religious freedom in uh, uh, the Middle East. Uh, Australia has uh, had a, a major role in the liberation of Iraq from Saddam Hussein, and it's therefore our right as a country to ask our Iraqi friends, the Iraqi government, to uh, take measures to uh, 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 preserve the safety of the Assyrian Christian minority and other Christians uh, in Iraq. Um, it is, I particularly express my disappointment to uh, Kurdish friends uh, in the north of Iraq who, uh, with whom Many people in uh, 
democratic movements across the world have held such, uh, in such high esteem that uh, uh, this persecution of the Christian minority in North Iraq take, continues to take place. I call on the, the, the Kurdish political parties and the Kurdish um, autonomous area in the north of Iraq to pay higher attention and to preserve the religious freedom of the Christian minority in the north of Iraq. Uh, I thank the parliamentary secretary. Uh, the question is that the motion be agreed to. Uh, I call the member for Hughes. Uh, thank you. I rise to support this motion moved by the member for Barara and I commend him on his leadership on Assyrian issues over many years in this House. I also acknowledge in the gallery today Hamish Shahan and David David and other members of the Assyrian community. Thank you for being here. Deputy Speaker, this motion uh, recognises, which calls on the House, recognises that the Christian Assyrians, a minority religious and racial group in Iraq, are subject to ongoing violence, intimidation, harassment, discrimination, on religious and ethnic grounds. B, that on the 31st of October 2010, 58 Christian Assyrians were killed in an attack on a church in Baghdad in an act of violent extremism targeting this minority group. C, Christian Assyrians are actively discriminated against by having their lands illegally occupied and transferred by squatters. D, that 600,000 Christian Assyrians have now fled Iraq, including many thousands to Australia, and E, Assyrians remaining in Iraq are denied many basic human rights and subject to ongoing harassment, intimidation and discrimination. And two, that this House condemns violence, intimidation, harassment and discrimination on religious and ethnic grounds, wherever it may be found, including Iraq, and three, calls upon the Australian government to raise the significant human rights concerns of Christian Assyrians with the Iraqi government. Acting Speaker, Assyrians are the indigenous people of Iraq, Turkey, Iran, Syria and Lebanon. They have a history that spans over 7,000 years. And today's Assyrians are the descendants of the ancient Assyrian Empire that was once our earliest civilizations. To the majority of the Assyrian population, they converted to Christianity in the second century, giving them a legitimate claim to being the first Christian nation in history. However, Acting Speaker, over the centuries, under Islamic rule and its attendant repressions, this has significantly reduced the number of Christians, especially in the Middle East. In 19, the year 1900, Christians actually made up 25% the population in the Middle East. By the year 2000, that was down to less than 5%. And then act, Acting Speaker came the Iraq War. Now, undoubtedly, Acting Speaker, Saddam Hussein was a brutal tyrant. He led his people into senseless wars, the Iran-Iraq War, the invasion of Kuwait, wars that resulted in hundreds of thousands of deaths. He used chemical weapons against his own people. However, I recall a question that was asked at the time of the Gulf War. Was Iraq the way it was because of Saddam? Or was Saddam the way he was because of Iraq? History now answers that question, and it seems there is truth in both. For Saddam and his Ba'athist regime did at least keep the genie of Islamic militancy in the bottle. However, since the fall of Saddam Hussein, Assyrians in Iraq have been the targets of numerous fatal attacks by Islamic terrorist groups. And the new Iraq, from time to time of its liberation, has witnessed a huge exodus of Christians. In the decades since the Gulf War, more than half of Iraq's Christians have fled to refugee camps in Syria or Jordan, reducing Iraq's pre-war population of Assyrians from 1 million to now around 400,000. And those remaining are experiencing some of the most pressing humanitarian crisis on our planet, suffering systematic persecution, which largely goes unreported in the mainstream media. Deputy Speaker, within the last 12 years, over 65 churches have been bombed and many destroyed and hundreds of Christians killed. In 2010, just a few months after the US combat troops left, militants associated with Al-Qaeda 
laid a bloody siege to Our Lady of Deliverance Church in Baghdad, killing 58 people, including two priests and winning 78 more. In the attack, as detailed in the New York Times, one of the priests, Father Sahenberg, was pushed to the ground as he grasped his crucifix and pleaded with his gunmen to spare his worshippers. He was then killed, his body riddled with bullets. Acting Speaker, today on its ancestral soil, all that's left of the world's oldest Christian nation is a desperate minority. A culture that survived centuries of hardship now stands on the verge of disappearing completely. We must use our voices in United Nations Security Council to bring these issues. the member for Hughes. I call, the question is that the motion be agreed to. I call the honourable member for Cornwall. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Deputy Speaker, I rise today to support the motion put forward by the member for Barawa and add my voice to the condemnation of uh, the continued persecution of Christian Assyrians, Chaldeans and Syriacs in Iraq. Um, Deputy Speaker, I've spoken on this issue in the House on many occasions in the past, uh, expressing my concern at the ongoing human rights abuse of minority groups in Iraq, but also in the broader Middle East. And I'd like to mention on this occasion the uh, persecution of Coptic Christians in Egypt and also uh, our thoughts to the Christian community now facing intense pressure in Syria. Um, as ethnic and religious minorities in Iraq, the Assyrian, Chaldean and Syriacs have been doubly targeted during the ethnic and sectarian civil war that has gripped Iraq since uh, the March 2003 invasion. Christian Iraqis form a disproportionate part of the millions of Iraqis placed by the, uh, displaced by the war. They have suffered from killings, bombings, kidnappings, torture, harassment, forced conversions and dispossessions. And I want to thank the members who have spoken uh, before me uh, and who have detailed the accounts of the atrocities. Um, my seat of Corwell is home to one of the largest constituencies of Iraqi Christians in Australia. They are amongst the <clears throat> thousands who have fled Iraq as refugees. So acts of violent extremism and discrimination on religious and ethnic grounds are matters that deeply distress members of the Assyrian, Syriac <coughs> and Chaldean communities in my electorate. Their faith, Deputy Speaker, is unyielding and freedom to practice without fear of persecution or persecution is paramount. In fact, such is the pious devotion to their faith and church that this Christian community has already built very strong roots in my electorate. Corwell is home to the Chaldean Cathedral of Our Lady Guardian of the Plants, the ancient Church of the East, St Mary's, the Holy Apostolic Catholic Assyrian Church of the East and the Holy Spirit Syriac Catholic Church. Church attendances during Mass is the highest level of any Christian community in Australia. And, and I have received much, much representation in my electorate from members of the Assyrian, Chaldean and Syriac communities. Of the many issues we discuss, we discuss ranging from immigration, refugee, family <coughs> union, degree and qualification recognition, the one issue closest to their hearts and minds is the issue of continued instability in Iraq and the persecution of their Christian brothers and sisters. The Pope of the Syriac Catholic Church, Pope Joseph, recently visited Melbourne from Lebanon and he led a mass at our Holy Spirit Catholic Church where he ordained five new deacons in a community deputy speaker which locally is made up of a hundred families. I say I use this as an example to show the depth of belief and reverence amongst this community. On May 12 this year I also had the great privilege of an audience with the patriarch of the Chaldean Church, uh, his beatitude Ma Louis Raphael I, during his visit to Our Lady of the Plants Chaldean Parish in Campbellfield. My discussions with his beatitudes were wide and very illuminating. Of course, they centred on the plight of Christians in Iraq and the broader Middle East, but the patriarch was also keen to discuss the experience and integration progress of his flock here in Australia. He noted his delight at their progress and stressed his desire that they integrate successfully in their new home. They bring with them a profound faith that can be instructive to other Christians, myself included, uh, Deputy Speaker, as I thoroughly enjoy attending their masses. His beatitude also expressed his deep concern about the forced exodus of Christians from Iraq and made specific reference to the brain drain effect it would have on Iraq's future development, given that Christian Iraqis are the most educated of the community and they are desperately needed in order to rebuild this broken and tragic country. In voicing concern about the overall future presence of Christians in Iraq, uh, as numbers dwindle because of the instability, persecution and displacement, a new threat is emerging, one that sees a possible disappearance of Christians altogether, 
a matter that even Muslims, according to the patriarch, Muslim Iraqis are very concerned about because it would throw Iraq into the hands of extremists, thereby destroying any chance of a safer and stronger country. And it's for this reason, um, Mr Deputy Speaker, that this motion we're debating here today is very important. Um, the irony of the Patriarch's observations did not escape me, however, because as the Chair of the Joint Standing Committee on Migration, I recently tabled a report which noted the difficulty the Iraqi community were having uh, with recognition of their skills and qualifications in Australia, yet his beatitude was lamenting the loss to Iraq of the highly skilled Christian population who subsequently, when coming to Australia, struggle um, to use their skills and educational I thank qualifications. The member for Cornwall. Uh, the question is that the motion be agreed to. I call the honourable member for Mitchell. Thank, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I want to commend uh, the member for Barara for an excellent motion in relation uh, to this matter, and indeed all members of this place, including the member for Melbourne Ports and the member for Hughes, I think for excellent contributions in recognition of this serious issue and problem. And I think it is a good idea for us to, in this place, call for the Australian government to raise the ongoing concern of significant human rights abuses of Christian Assyrians uh, with the Iraqi government of today. And given the record of Australia in assisting Iraq and the people of Iraq uh, in their needs over the years, uh, it's a good chance for us to represent our ongoing concern about uh, the serious situation that minority Christian groups are facing uh, in Iraq today. I also want to say uh, that I, it's been my privilege to work with the Australian Assyrian community uh, and n get to know and meet with many uh, of its fantastic members and the contribution that they're making. Um, we certainly see uh, in Australia today members of parliament, uh, people entering parliaments in this country like Ninos Kashaba for the ALP, but a good friend of mine in the New South Wales Liberal Party, uh, Andy Rowan, the member for Smithfield, who's doing a fantastic job uh, as an uh, Australian of Assyrian background. I also want to acknowledge uh, the contribution of his beatitude, Ma Miles Zaya, the Archbishop of the Assyrian Church of the East in Australia and New Zealand, uh, who has received the Order of Australia Medal in recognition of his contribution. Mr Deputy Speaker, it's uh, of ongoing concern that even recently, even in May uh, this year, uh, we have seen minority Christians amongst those suffering um, and up to 140 people dying through four consecutive days of violence in Iraq. Um, it, this ongoing concern is added to records and reports of up to a thousand uh, Assyrian Christians uh, losing their life uh, in the time since the fall of Saddam Hussein. Uh, a very sobering statistic indeed. Um, it's, it's sobering to read that if these attacks, attacks take place in a Christian neighbourhood or a Christian village, you can assume that they are targeted, uh, especially against the Christian population of the neighbourhoods and villages. Uh, that is, these attacks are deliberately targeted against Christians uh, in Iraq today. And when you read uh, the report, uh, the Human Rights Report on Assyrians in Iraq, the Exodus from Iraq 2011, put out by the Assyria Council of Europe, um, you get some really sobering information about what is going on uh, and why we need a motion such as this today, uh, given that the member for Barara has highlighted that 600,000 Christian Assyrians have now fled Iraq in fear of this ongoing persecution and human rights abuses. Um, we've seen the huge exodus of minorities and continuing threats and violence in 2011. And while this report notes a general decrease in violence, uh, that is coming from a proportion which is completely unacceptable to any civilised country. Assyrians and other minorities are constantly experiencing targeted violence, threats and intimidation. And it was, of course, disturbing uh, to read that because of the continuing displacement process, many Assyrians are now not able to sustain themselves, lacking regular sources of income, opportunities and education and neither uh, the Iraq, uh, central Iraq government or the Kurdistan regional government is, of course, adequately dealing with these problems. Uh, the real purpose of this motion, of course, is to highlight the dozens of attacks and the revealed patterns of structural discrimination against Assyrians and their organisations um, uh, during the past few years. We've seen continuing violence. We've seen people wounded. We've seen people killed. We've seen people abducted. Uh, we've seen the bombing of churches and parishioners being killed. All of these things in the world's eyes are completely unacceptable uh, in any country, but completely unacceptable in a new state that has been supported uh, by so many countries like Australia. Uh, in 2011, of course, we learnt from our report that a considerable movement amongst Assyrians was taking place uh, because of the highly dangerous situation. Uh, women have been especially targeted. 
Uh, women have been support, forced to take on uh, the garments of a faith they don't support. Uh, and of course, the Syrian women in particular face constant threats of physical violence and danger. Uh, this, uh, this is completely unacceptable, uh, unacceptable to the international community and unacceptable to Australia. It's unacceptable that the marginalisation of minorities is partly incorporated into the new constitution of Iraq. Um, and I'd have to say that we don't want to see institutionalised discrimination in the constitution of any uh, new country uh, that is supported by a free uh, society like Australia. Uh, it is, of course, vital uh, that we pass this motion today and recognise uh, that the Christian Assyrian community, a minority religious and racial group in Iraq, are subject to this ongoing violence and intimidation, and that the contribution that they are making here in Australia uh, is to be admired and praised, uh, and that we do need to do more to raise this issue with the Iraqi government to ensure that all minorities within uh, Iraq are treated fairly. I thank the member for Mitchell. Uh, the question is that the motion be agreed to. I'll call the Chief <coughs> Government Whip. Thank you, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. Uh, I also join in strongly uh, commending uh, the member for Barara and bring this matter before the Parliament today. And I welcome the representatives from the uh, Syrian uh, University Alliance, uh, Mr uh, David David and uh, um, Hamid Shirin, um, and the rest of the members are here today. This is, uh, as members will be aware, I've spoken on this matter on many a time um, in this Parliament, and I agree with the member for Barara that it is now a time for urgent need for compassion, a compassionate response at least by the international community, what is truly a humanitarian crisis in Iraq. I know the member for Barara has quoted the figure of 600,000 people who have left Iraq since 2003. However, I'd like to quote a figure for the House, Mr Deputy Speaker, provided to me by the Catholic Church. They say that uh, one million uh, people, uh, uh, Assyrian, Indigenous Assyrians, uh, Mandaeans and other Christian minorities have exited Iraq since 2003. Uh, they've been forced to flee uh, or, or subject to forced conversions, uh, subject to physical violence, but nevertheless, according to the Catholic Church, over a million people have left and they will not be returning uh, to Iraq. Mr. Speaker, uh, Australia was a willing participant in the military engagement in 2003 um, that saw a, a, a dr dramatic restructuring of, of, the, uh, of the infrastructure and uh, uh, forces that operate to influence the outcomes within Iraq. The invasion resulted in a dr dramatic escalation, however, uh, between uh, disputes between the, the Sunni and the Shia Iraqis, with the uh, Indigenous um, Assyrians and Christian minorities very much caught in the middle. Now, as I mentioned, over the last 10 years, uh, over a million uh, Indigenous Assyrians, uh, Mandaeans uh, and other uh, uh, Christian minorities have forced to flee the, uh, the region. But it's a region which they have called home for over the last 2,000 years. The, the aromatic speakers, the same language that was spoken by Jesus Christ, they were part of this world uh, in, in part of that region, rather, um, uh, well before the British and the French decided to put lines on the map and call it Iraq. These people were indigenous, truly indigenous of that region, and, uh, and that indigenality has now failed to be, uh, be accepted. Back in 2010, Mr Deputy Speaker, I spoke of the horrific attack at the Our Lady of uh, Salvation Church in Baghdad, where 58 um, uh, Christians were murdered. People often go to church, uh, temples, mosques, or whatever the place of worship might be, uh, for spirituality. They go there to find safety and solace. Pretty heartbreaking, Mr Deputy Speaker, to imagine children, young people, families being murdered for what, what they would consider being the most sacred of locations, uh, their place of worship. The location of the attack sends a very strong message about uh, uh, religion being the focal point of violence and persecution in the Middle East today. The attack was carried out by uh, members of the Islamic, uh, uh, Islamic State of Iraq, a group which is aligned to uh, Al-Qaeda, which has made it their mission to rid Iraq of Christian minority groups, including Assyrians. Um, and therefore, with the Christians in Iraq, men, women and children have been made le legitimate targets by these radical organisations. The, um, the report 
entitled Incipit Genocide, the Ethnic Cleansing of Assyrians in Iraq, outlines in detail the systemic and uh, consistent persecution of Assyrians in Iraq, including the <coughs> gruesome murders, extortion and violence. Looking at the images of the victims, including the children, putting a face to each of these tragic stories, Mr Deputy Speaker, is truly confronting and sobering. Uh, Assyrians and other religious minorities in Iraq face the, the dice of circumstances of any group of people, quite frankly, in the modern world. Australia is a nation which is fortunate, fortunate enough to enjoy political and economic stability and has a responsibility as a, a global, uh, as a leading member of the global community, we have a responsibility to do all we can to improve these conditions. However, Mr Deputy Speaker, we have a, an additional moral responsibility to assist the involvement of, uh, in Iraq, given the, having regard to the fact we were part of the Coalition of the Willing, which set in motion the chain of events resulting in the persecution of religious minorities in Iraq. Mr Deputy Speaker, once again, I thank the member for Barara bringing this matter to I the attention of the House. I thank the Chief Government Whip. Uh, the question is the motion be agreed, so I call the member for Higgins. Thank you yeah. very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. And I rise to add my contribution to the very excellent contributions made uh, both across the chamber and on this side of the chamber to this wonderful motion put forward by my good friend and colleague, the member for Barara. Everyone has the right to freedom of thought, conscience and religion. This right includes freedom to change his religion or belief and freedom either alone or in community with others and in public or private to manifest his religion or belief in teaching, practice, worship and observance. This is Article 18 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Tragically, in some parts of the world, this fundamental right is not observed. It is not being observed in the case of the Assyrian people in Iraq and Syria. The Assyrian people have a proud and rich history that spans back more than 5,000 years. Their foundations can be found in the Middle East, largely Iraq and Syria, and are a people of predominantly Christian faith. There is an estimated population of around 3 million Assyrians worldwide, with 1 million of those in Iraq and around 700,000 in Syria. In what can only be described as a cruel twist of fate, it is because of their rich culture that the Assyrians have faced violence, intimidation, harassment and discrimination. Under Saddam Hussein, they face significant persecution. Unfortunately, since the removal of that dictator, the situation has not markedly improved. On the 31st of October 2010, 58 Assyrian <coughs> Christians were killed in a coordinated and deliberate attack on a church designed to terrorise and intimidate those Assyrians and those families of those Assyrians. They were targeted based on their religion. There have been, unfortunately, many other forms of persecution and violence. And for the record of this house, I place on the record a number of those examples. Uh, on Epiphany Day, the 6th of January 2008, five Assyrian churches, one Armenian church and monasteries in Mosul and Baghdad were attacked with car bombs. In 2011, 35 civilians and security forces were wounded in eight separate attacks. Kidnapping and ra ransom have become a significant tools of terror, with six abductions reported in 2011, largely around Kirkuk. Some were freed by ransom and others were killed. Threats and low-level harassment are expected as part of everyday life, including now threats by text message. Work opportunities and other basic human rights are also denied, especially in the Kurdish region. The result of this persecution has been the dislocation of around 600,000 Assyrian Christians in Iraq alone. Happily for us in Australia, many Assyrians have chosen to make Australia their home and make a very valuable and worthwhile contribution. The Arab Spring that promised so much in the way of hope and expectation already seems to be turning to winter. And there is the ever increasing concern in the Middle East that the religious freedoms of the minority Christian and Jewish people are being diminished over time. 
Those of us with a voice must remain ever vigilant to ensure that we speak out against violence, harassment and intimidation. We have a duty. We call upon the Australian government to raise the significant human right, rights concerns of the Christian Assyrians with the Iraq government. I commend this excellent motion to the House. Uh, I thank, thank the member for Higgins. The question is the motion be agreed to. I call the member for Werriwa. Uh, I have pleasure in joining with the member for Barawa in relation to this matter. Uh, he's got a very consistent record in regards to human rights uh, around the globe. And the point I want to make, this is about uni universality of human rights. It's not about particular religions in particular countries. Uh, tonight, myself and uh, the member for Melbourne Ports will speak on a resolution in regards to Shia rights in Bahrain uh, because of, the, of their suppression there. Similarly, we are around the world we see the Sri Lankan uh, uh, Buddhist community attacking Muslim uh, businesses, and we know about what is happening to the Rohingyas uh, in Burma. Uh, similarly, we deplore uh, actions by extremist Islamic forces in Bangladesh in regards to Christian, Buddhist and Hindu minorities there. So these are matters in which this parliament quite rightly acts, uh, and uh, it's good to see the Assyrian Universal Alliance's representatives here lobbying in their country where they live, where they have been accepted as refugees in regards to human rights uh, in Iraq. Uh, the situation is we are talking essentially about the indigenous people of this land. Uh, we are talking about people who have been there since at least 5000 BC. Uh, and what has happened in Iraq is that uh, they have become the scapegoats for extremist elements in the country without much protection from the government authorities and, in, in, in actual fact, with studied neglect of their rights for protection. Uh, often these attacks are contrived around uh, events happening around the world. We see an upsurge of attacks uh, uh, on the Syrians, Chaldeans, Syriac Orthodox uh, that uh, respond to some comment by the Pope. Uh, then we see other attacks uh, because of publications in Danish newspapers, etc. Uh, so they become the scapegoats uh, for, the, for some of these groups' uh, concerns with uh, events around the world. Now, what we are seeing, of course, is a very strong uh, flight from Iraq uh, post the overthrow of Saddam Hussein. We're talking about half or more of Assyrians fleeing to uh, other nations in the Middle East uh, and, of course, to Sweden and Australia. And Sweden's so strong that they have their own first division soccer team there. Uh, that's symptomatic of uh, the, the, the protection in that country. And uh, uh, this is, as I say, a series of orchestrated uh, uh, attacks which uh, in some sense are basically about uh, uh, making the country uh, uh, not homo uh, making it homogeneous, uh, getting all minorities expelled from the country by uh, systematic violence. We see that the community also suffers from unemployment, financial hardship, difficulties in education and growing general <coughs> religious intolerance, uh, shaping the daily life that they suffer. There is no future for their, children's, uh, for their children. There's grave doubts about practicing religion, about keeping institutions going, uh, about, uh, and uh, in regards to preserving language and culture in general. Uh, these were things that occurred under the previous uh, uh, Ba'athist regime. Uh, there might have been some hope uh, that the Western intrusion, uh, that things would improve. But uh, of course, as we've seen, the <coughs> power of uh, militias in the country has been such that uh, uh, th this, th this uh, violence has actually escalated. There have been figures given in the publication Incipient Genocide, the Ethnic Cleansing of Assyrians of Iraq, which, said that, which indicate that for the years 1995 to 2002, uh, the yearly death uh, from murder of Assyrians and other Christians was 19 a year. But it escalated in the period 2003 to 12 to 41 a year, uh, more than doubling. Uh, and uh, we've seen, uh, uh, as I say, bombings of uh, religious events, uh, we've seen targeted assassinations of uh, religious uh, uh, leaders and priests, uh, and uh, it is a situation where uh, it, it stretches from a two-month-old infant uh, kidnapped, beheaded, roasted and returned to his parents, a uh, 14-year-old uh, uh, child decapitated. Uh, as I say, these are matters in which, uh, regardless of political uh, beliefs across this parliament, there is abhorrence of what is occurring. It is important that Australia does join European parliaments that have uh, condemned these actions. It is important that the message is given to the government of Iraq. Uh, it is a situation where uh, forces from other countries uh, died in, a, in a, a, a belief that uh, democracy would be restored in the country, that the previous uh, attacking uh, minorities of various sorts in the country 
One alarming uh, development, of course, is that Kurdistan at one stage appeared to uh, uh, offer more protection. On balance, it's probably true, but the situation uh, has been deteriorating there as well. So to say, I uh, strongly commend the resolution. It is important that this country is vocal on human rights, that we do stand up for minorities regardless of who they are, and particularly those cultures that uh, possibly face extinction in language and culture and religion if measures aren't taken to protect them. I commend the resolution again. I thank the member for Werriwa. The question... Oh, OK, yes, very good. Um, the time allotted for the debate has expired. The debate is adjourned and the resumption of the debate will be made.